Hello. So let's keep working on this project. I have uh, about half an hour to to work on this, maybe even more. But okay. So the first thing I want to do is to see where we left off. Uh, okay, this is done, so I can remove it. And let me run the project just so I can see what's going on here. Uh, cool. So basically, this is where we left off. We are rendering some color and also having some, uh, okay, <laughs> having some uh, title for the screen. Let me see that. That was pretty cool. So yeah, basically we don't have a resize function and this is failing to get the texture because it is outdated. Cool. Now I want to see, first of all, what's going on here. I'd like to explain it uh, so I can understand better. This is pretty clustered in my opinion, but at least we have it working. To make it work, I had to make the new function async as well as uh, get rid of the window reference in the engine struct. Mm, so far, I mean, at this point, I don't really need the window to be available for me. Uh, variable does not need to be mutable. Okay. I don't really need the that function to be available for me. Do you really want to write to it? Yes, we do. Okay. Cool. So let me see. I have the event loop here. I'm creating the window. The window at this point is useful or, or it's being used just to create a surface. Now I'm creating the instance here. The, with the instance, I can create the surface and pass the window as the target. Okay. Then I can create the adapter or not create, but more like request an adapter. One second, please. I have to figure out what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Everything's cool. I guess. Mm. Okay. Right. Here we are. And here. Cool. There we go. What's going on here? Okay, yeah, anyway, anyways, let me open my um, documentation. I, I was getting this from the WGPU repo. Cool, there we go. So now I'm creating the adapter here or getting the adapter more like uh, instead of creating and I'm passing the surface as the compatible surface. This is the reason why I needed it to be async. Only for this reason. But I'm thinking that 
maybe the only thing I have to do here is adapter, maybe bolster block no block, sorry lock on and instance request adapter request adapter options and you know what I'm just gonna copy this here there we go and basically on the wrap Did this work? Yeah, so this doesn't even need to be vsync anymore. Oh, because I have another waiter. Okay, let me get rid of that. Those changes. I'm not going to focus on that just yet. So after creating the adapter, I can use it to retrieve the device and the queue. Cool. Once we've retrieved the device and the queue and we have a surface ready, we can get a surface configuration. Right now we're using the default and configure it using the device and passing the configuration. Okay, so far so good. Then in the run function, remember we're using this we have block on engine this is just for uh, convenience right now i will i will remove this or refactor this in a bit and then when we call the run function what we're actually doing is um, running the event loop here we are checking for window events and if the event is redraw requested, then we get the frame. And by getting the frame, I mean get current texture. Uh, then we get we create a view with the texture view descriptor set to its default. Hmm. Interesting. Let me see this for a second. Mm. Implement texture view descriptor. Okay, texture view global ID. Okay. Mm. Anyways, we're getting default values somehow. And then we are creating a an encoder, a, commands, a command encoder. There we go. Here we are creating a render pass. And basically this render pass, uh, what is this? What does this return? Uh, yeah, so this is returning the render pass begins recording of a render pass. This function returns a render pass object with the records, which records a single render pass. Okay. And basically we are passing the color green. First of all, I don't want the color green. View RGB, is it possible? Color. You see. Okay, I can pass the color here easily and 
let's see let's put r i don't know 0 0.3 for example uh one second maybe there's some new okay let me go back implement color const transparent okay 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 yeah I can do something like this. Red, let's put 0 0.3, for example. Green, let's put, wait, 0 0.3. Green, let's say 0 0.5. Blue, let's say 0 0.4. And alpha, 1.0. So, this should give us a different color, pretty little color, hopefully. Okay, yeah, I like these colors better, you know, lighter colors. Cool. So now, at this moment, we don't even need the render pass at all. So I can get rid of this and this and get rid of this. Maybe later I will regret this but for now um, I think it's cleaner basically we just have a render pass mm, set up here and and we submit the encoder submits a series of finished command buffers for execution and we can present the frame at this point at this point schedule these textures to be presented on the owning surface cool needs to be called after any work on the texture is scheduled via q submit all right so we're using q submit here and we can present that's it cool so there's something here that is annoying. Okay, the configuration is mutable and it doesn't need to be mutable at this point. So let's get rid of that as well. Cool. Let's see what we have in our to-do list. Okay, adding logging is sort of... Nah, I was going to say it was trivial, but um, it's actually not. So for now, let's configure the visa. Ah, you know what? I'm going to go with the, with the logging. Yeah. Let me see what they use. Um, I'm going to go to the WGPU examples. No, actually, you know, I'm just going to see their Tom. Here it is. Um, Okay, they use amp logger. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Amp logger. Great. Let's see. Blog or an I'm blogger. Mm. Maybe I'll go with log. A log trait provides single logging API that abstracts over the actual logging implementation libraries. Um, <clears throat> then it says libraries can use the logging API provided by this trait, and the consumer of those libraries can choose the logging implementation that is most suitable or its use case okay 
So yeah, I think this is cool. Let me go to the repo and see if uh, this is something we'd like to use. They are currently in version zero point four point twenty one. Let's see which version M Blogger is. Okay, so M Blogger is actually implements a logger that can be configured via environment variables. mblogger makes sense when used in executables, binary projects. Libraries should use log create instead. So actually mblogger needs the log create to be to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the log create for now. And afterwards, we will probably include also the end blogger. But for now, let's go ahead and do some cargo add blog. Cool. Now that we have our logger ready, we can add some login here. Okay, so this is pretty handy, just some macros. I mean, we could have just um, used print lines and such for, for our purpose right now, but um, better now than when this becomes too big, you know? At least in my opinion. The sooner the better, because if not, um, you end up having to do a lot of work that could have been prevented. So for example, let's say we have this and this, okay, um, I'm not going to log these errors right now. I'm not going to handle everything, but Here, for example, You know what, I don't even think I'm going to log anything right now, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I don't really care for it right now. Why not? Because this is too simple yet. I mean, I am not going to handle every error at this point. Because, for example, I could uh, add something here, right? So... I could catch an error for the event loop and then here there's, there's also the possibility of, of um, not getting the right value. This function will may panic um, instead prefer to use pattern matching uh, and handle the error, right? So I could uh, do that here and handle the error. But at this point, I feel like it's overkill. One thing I could do is to start refactoring everything just to make it more stable 
also that would be a good thing so i can i could clean this up you know what i'm gonna go with down that path because if i start refactoring i then could add also the logging and to, that would be two birds with one stone right i would refactor and as, as i'm refactoring i'm going to start adding some logging here also because this is pretty annoying for me Sorry about that. There's there was something weird going on with my home assistant. Anyways, this is annoying for me to have to call the ball block here. And yeah, I'm gonna go down that path in this session. I'm gonna start refactoring things. So first of all, I don't want to to break anything, so I'm gonna go with it uh check out. Let's add refactor. Cool. Now, one thing I would like to do is to start building here my engine and not having to make it async. So maybe I will create some async functions and use Polster inside the new. So when I call the new function in my main, I could just call it and the poster would be handled inside the new function instead. That would be an improvement. Okay. So let's see. What about um, start handling errors? So for example, I could do something like if let error e and event loop new and then I could log error. I think it's error. Oh, something like this. Is it possible? And I would say event loop failed to initialize. And I could pass the error here. I think this is possible, right? Uh, no, I need log error. This is the one. Okay, that's simple enough. And if I get an error here, I can just return. Oh, of course. Um, so at this point, I'm going to do result engine for Or error, nothing, I don't care. Yeah. Hmm. No, I don't want to to return an error here, actually. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna return default options. So I would just return self. And here I can do something like, uh,
something like this. And maybe I can even do a default here. Yeah. Uh, new, let me create a default option. Um, maybe I can implement that. I think this is the preferred way. Yeah, and it will be engine and event will be long and I'm going to create options for everything for now. This is experimenting just, uh, I'm just experimenting some stuff. Probably. something like this and here I can do revise non what else uh, I need Q non and I need surface no right there we go so we have the default and since we have a default now if there's an error I can just return the engine or clear up oh, i'm gonna go with engine default right there we go expected why is this expecting nothing? Oh, probably because of this. Yeah, so something like that. And then, okay, I can get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, how about this? I'm gonna create an engine here and make it mutable. And I'm gonna do engine default. And here I can just return engine. Right? And I don't like this anymore, so I can just do, um, oops, no, this is okay, but instead of doing if let error, I can do match el and do event loop new sorry match event loop new and here I can do OK event loop and engine dot event loop is equal to some EL and here I can just log error failed to create event loop okay oh wait uh, I actually need to do this here I, I will return if this is an issue 
and return energy like so okay much better now what we're doing here is handling the error and just um adding some stuff in case in case there's an error we will log an error and we will return the default engine which basically has no functionality now i can get rid of this and have basically the same approach for the window this is just a, a small improvement but window builder I will make it a lot better enough to I I just want to clean this a little bit and then I will finish the refactoring with title yeah then the title is title and build with the engine event loop wrap at this point I can do unwrap because I know the event loop if we got to this point the event loop is some it's I mean it's not none so at this point it's safe to unwrap and after that we can just build and let me see what's the issue here okay I have an issue with this because I, it needs to be uh, a reference and we can get rid of this as well and that, there we go now uh, okay and we would call this win if the window is built correctly then we can add it to our engine dot Oh, I don't have the window object yet. So I'm going to add it here. I mean, right now I'm not even using the window at all. But I'm pretty sure um, I'm going to need it. So I'm just going to add it. Window. Win. Right. And error. Just pass an error and we will log it. Uh, fail to create window error and we will return engine for now. I mean, I could return a default engine at this point, so I uh if we got to this point it means we have an event loop right and if i return this it would be an engine with only the event loop set for now i don't mind in a perfect world i would probably just return a here i need to... I, I would probably just return a default because just you know what just to make it clear or clearer and handling any misbehavior. You know what? I'm actually going to do that. It takes nothing and it's pretty clear or a lot more clean to to do it like this. Because you know the idea is communicated better if we do that if we do if we do it this way. Now we have it. Okay. Now we can get rid of this. At this point here uh, we can do engine event loop on wrap again at this point uh, We know that event loop is sum, so it is safe to unwrap because of these two checks. 
hand here. Let's keep going. Um, so let, let me see what set control flow does. Yeah, this there's nothing to catch here. But here we can do engine dot window uh, on wrap, of course. Once again, it's safe to unwrap because the same reason and instance, we're creating an instance. Cool surface, we need to create a surface here. Now, this is the tricky part because once we use our window here, it, it's going to give ownership to, to this function. So the window ownership gets passed in this function. And then uh, we might lose it here. No, actually, yeah, I was, um, I was a little confused, but here, this is a place where we can catch an error. So we add logging and we refactor it a little bit. Basically what we're going to do is use match uh, instance dot create, what was it? Create surface. Then we pass our engine window uh, on wrap here and we will do okay. Surface. And we can do, oops, engine surface, some surface action, some. And catch the error. error. Okay. Uh, failed to create surface. And basically, that's the error. Return engine default. Cool. So far, so good. And I think this reads a lot better than all the mess we had before. And we get rid of this. Let's see the adapter. The adapter here, we can also, if the self panics, if the self value equals none. Let's try this. So we can use match adapter. No, sorry, match uh, instance, request adapter. And you know what? Uh, I don't want to rewrite everything every time. So I'm just going to do um, something like this, like so. Blah, 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 blah. And wait. You know what? Actually, here we can use the poster. Lock on. Boom. Just like that. Just like that. Non sum Rust cannot find the value surface. Okay. So here I need engine dot surface dot on wrap. At this point we can use wrap again, blah blah blah. And 
we can do some instance mm. no we are requesting an adapter some adapter and you know what adapter we don't even need it uh, stored at least not for now so um, let me think here for a second what would be a good way of handling this here probably instead of using the match um, I can use if let error and return default or just you know what um just gonna go with it and let it fail because at this point i don't actually care too much so yeah instead of doing this i'm gonna do this but instead of using the await i'm gonna use poster here yeah maybe this is better poster lock on and here i'm just gonna let it fail because anyway if this fails we are not going to be able to render anything so yeah at this point it's safe to i mean not safe but you know uh, we don't mind if this fails or not. No, no, we mind if this fails. I mean, we don't mind what kind of error or logging something specific in this case. We can just let it break. Okay, this is a little better. And I think we can actually remove this async. Yeah, no worries. This is all expected and at this point we can use poster here as well let me think if we need uh, yeah so at this point we can do something like um, match again and we need to match this actually this and let's bring everything from this place on up until this point match mm. yeah match this I'm gonna remove this I don't need it anymore I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna have poster lock on and here okay an error and we do need okay an error here we are going to do okay and okay returns topo with device and q right if this is uh okay then we will use our engine device is some device and engine q is some q right and if this is an error then we will log error uh enable to create device and q and we will log the error here and return engine default 
Okay, then I can get rid of this. And finally, we configure the surface here. Uh, the adapter is here. The size and the width are here. I can use engine dot surface dot unwrap. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do something like let surface. Oh, surface is equal to just for commodity and then here I can just remove this and remove this okay everything is cool and Ah, no, I'm going to make it verbose because that way I will remember. Engine.surface.unwrap and adapter, okay. Engine.surface.unwrap configure. Too verbose, maybe, but. Uh, is explicit. I like to think of it as explicit and not uh, verbose. Engine dot device dot unwrap. And finally, if we get to this point, we can just return our engine. Cool. So now this reads a lot better in my opinion. And we added logging. Here, of course, we need to refactor this again. Oh, missing field window, of course. So let's add it window none. Cool. And basically, we can do self unwrap. Uh, da, 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 da. And here we can actually do some logging and some error handling as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. If let uh, something like some event loop self dot event loop or you know what better yet let's do a match match self dot event loop sum Then event loop dot run. And here we can just remove this and have everything from here. Blah, 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 blah. All of this up until this point. Yes. More. Less, I don't know. Uh, which one is this? Ah, okay. Anyways, I, this is ugly, so uh, I, uh, I want to also change it now that I remember. So, remember, we need to move the ownership event target. Okay, this is cool. And let's do it like this. And here we will add none. 
and if it's none then we will uh, just log an error event loop is not set okay now let's separate this Uh, there's a way of matching the window event to this event without using the match event and then you know uh, all of this is kind of verbose I think there was a way let me find it I can't remember where I saw it but I thought it was better or cleaner not better but cleaner let me see if i can fetch it from ah, i think they, they had it in winit uh, repo let me fetch that we need github mm, or was it not in the repo and it was in the documentation probably yeah yeah here it is so i think this is in my opinion this is cleaner or clearer so they do match events and here is basically the same thing <laughs> no this is not the same thing event window event we don't care about the id and uh, instead of passing the id okay let's pass everything they do it like this we could just pass an underscore or whatever and in the event instead of using it like this they do window event and for example i don't know close request ah yeah this was it and then we handle the close requested here and the close request is just target dot exit i think yeah yeah i think this is cleaner we can do something like this here or everything else just do nothing okay yeah it changes right this they do on the if let event window event la 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 then event and they match in this event um yeah this is better so we get close requested we have it then we are also handling read all requested so here we are going to add a case event window event uh, we don't need the id and event we will be window event redraw requested and in this case is where the nitty-gritty starts of course i'm missing the dot block there we go and then here we will create a frame self dot um also now that i remember there was there's not i mean it's not an issue per se but since we are uh using the event loop run here and this doesn't return anything even handle closure to this patch not not that it's not returning anything but we're moving this ownership here we need to i mean we're not cleaning up the resources so we need to move the, the resources 
ownership here. And by resources, I mean the window, the device, etc. And we need to make sure that we clean all of that uh, because again, here we're not returning anything. That's something to, to be aware of. So I'm going to add it here because I'm not going to handle it right now. Uh, clear resources in event loop one. Okay. So I'm just going to finish what I was doing. Um, read all requests. So I'm going to do let frame is equal to self dot surface dot unwrap and here we're handling the error if the event loop is none we already handled it so we cannot get to this point if we don't have a, a surface that's why it's safe to unwrap here having that in mind maybe it's not a uh, very robust solution because if if it wasn't just me working on this project and someone changed something where they didn't return the engine default with all the options set to none it would be probably confusing i'm thinking but again i feel like it this reads pretty clearly so for now i'm gonna keep it that way also, I've not I've not done with the refactor, so I don't care. Surface, basically, that's the reason. Surface get current texture, and yeah, we're handling an error here, but I would like to handle it better. Yeah, there we go. We can handle it here. Um, get current texture. This returns a surface texture or a surface error so we can handle that here instead of frame mm, no i don't like it I, I was going to match this and keep matching it until we got to the to the final uh, render but no, I, I'm going to follow this approach better. Failed to, to get texture. This is good enough for me. And then we create a view. No, this is frame actually, frame that texture and uh, that create view and we pass WPU uh, texture view descriptor here we go and we use the default and that's it and then we create the encoder and the encoder is self that device that unwrap dot mm, create command encoder and we have to pass a command encoder description wgpu encoder descriptor and this only has a label set to none cool i think we need a comma there for some reason yeah and what else so now that we have this we can use encoder to begin the render pass. Begin render pass and we will pass WGPU render pass color attachment. No, render pass descriptor, sorry. And here I'm gonna copy paste this thing because I liked the color basically. And here, mismatch expected. Okay, no worries. I'm just missing this. And 
move what else uh, then we can use the queue and present the frame basically that's all that we have left here self queue and we need to add one wrap here what cannot find value encoder what do you mean encoder oh sorry yeah uh, we like here typo and there we go I think that's also cleaner than all of this and basically I'm just gonna remove the last event loop and there we go so we have the event loop handled here and I think that's pretty much it then I can go to the main and remove the pollster it's not an async function anymore and there we go now let's run it perfect <laughs> let's see what what the errors are about uh okay just a few errors moved it to this method call yeah that was something i i was um i was concerned about basically we are moving the ownership and we're not handling that so let's go back and fix all of this so when we weird thing is that it didn't let me know here okay Yeah, I think the problem is the freaking window. Ah, uh, okay. How about doing something like this? Oh, uh, I need to add here as ref as well. I think I should add as mute ref here. Yeah, again, the issue is the window here. 
it can be different. And in the default, I would also have to remove it here. Okay, this um, And to as wrap. Okay, this was a mess. Captured outer variable. What if I did something like uh, what else do I have? Q device um, event loop surface. Hmm. I know there's something like this, but I can't remember the syntax. So let me search for it real quick. Um, we have WGPU. They, uh, they should have examples somewhere. Yeah. I saw it in triangle, could be. Low triangle, probably. Mod.rs, and let me see how they did that. Expected pattern. Okay, I see what I'm missing. So I'm missing this. Okay, and now I can do it like this. And what else? So use of variable self device. Where is it?
let me think about this for just one second so if i do self dot event loop and there is some event loop I then can do event loop q surface device right and um, use of loop value self q and then I can do let surface okay Then we can do then here uh, we just need to remove the self here in the unwrap consider to be mutable of course and we need q where is it here And yeah, basically we can add an unwrap here. And I think that fixes most of it at least. Let's see. Ah, okay, there we go. So this is um, a little better and at least we added some uh, logging, we did some cleanup, some housekeeping. I feel like this is at least more readable now. Still we have a lot to, to work on here but this is starting to, to look better. Now I can say that we added plugging so we can remove that. And uh, let me see how much time I have left. Mm. Okay. One second. Uh I think I can try to finish the resizing real quick. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. Check your encoder settings, keyframe intro. I am not sure what's going on. Anyway. Um, cool, so let me try to add some resizing, probably. I am not going to remove refactor because I want to refactor even more here. I want I, I like my concerns well separated. And I feel like these functions are doing a lot more than they should. So even though I, I do like it, how it's coming all together here, and I feel like if you read this, 
you understand you pretty much understand what's going on and what what uh, everything is is trying to achieve i still don't like to have everything handled in this new function for example i would love to have a lot of smaller functions who which um handled each step and you could read uh i don't know setup window setup uh, device setup etc and you could read it like that but the world is not perfect and that's it those, those are some of the caveats in my uh, personal opinion and coming from an unexperienced in rust i i do feel like this sort of um these are kind of the difficulties of of using the safe uh, approach you know the borrow checker i understand again where it's coming from and why it's important and or why it's uh, a good a good approach but sometimes for me at least as a, again i have not that much experience with rust I, i've been using it for uh a little more or i don't know about a year or so you know just doing personal projects and recently at work i started to implement some system in rust i really enjoy rust i really like it i see all its potential but to work on a game engine or with graphics uh it can be tough so yeah i think that's going to be all for today thank you for being here thanks for the for the cool support and chat and everything and i'll see you again real soon have a great one bye by the way i i will come back hopefully i'm not sure if this starts afternoon but any any spare time i have to work on this project i will be doing that so thanks bye